everybody. Welcome to the What Culture Gaming Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Taylor, joined by Ben Roy Taylor. Video games, everyone. <laughs> and Mr. Josh Brown. Hello. Chaps, I'd have some notes to get to, but I just want to open on a very open-ended question. Question that is just two words. Hideo Kojima, question mark. What does that bring to it's, mind? Anybody? It's funny that, Scott, because that's how I start all my dates. You just go, Hideo Kojima. <laughs> What do you think? It's a good Let's marker go. of whether you're going to get on with someone or not. If they go, who? Or if they go, hallelujah, <laughs> then you're in. You I, see, I was saying it to myself last night when I was playing Snake Eater and I was pressing R1 to zoom into some females' breasts. Fantastic. Right, over and over yeah, I, was like, that online, mate. On. I was like, I forgot that this was a feature in this game and it's still <laughs> here. And I was like, God's sake. Coming at you in HD. I yeah. think, um, the reason, <clears throat> excuse me. The reason I want to talk about Hideo Kojima is because right now he kind of exists in like a nexus of three major rumors. Like there's all this stuff about his potential involvement in Silent Hills. There's potentially him being a consultant on the Metal Gear remake. I mean, we're going full on pinch of salt. Oh my God, potential yeah. stuff. Um, but if, if Blue Point are actually remaking Metal Gear Solid, Kojima's in-house because he's signed with Sony and he could potentially be a uh, consultant. And the other thing is the Death Stranding 2 stuff from, I think it was only a few weeks ago where he was back being talked about again because people were zooming into some of his tweets and realized that the word Bridges was on the side of a sketch of a submarine. And it seems like some underwater component for Death Stranding um, could either be in a sequel or could be in the full-on next-gen version of that game. Um, so I kind of want to just talk about every all things Kojima. Like he's, he's <laughs> pretty essential to the industry. Um, but what sort of things, I guess, where would you, where's your mind go in regards to where he's going to go next, Mr. Benroy? I think he's going to go somewhere a bit more commercial, I think, because um, uh, the, the Death Stranding obviously didn't sell the gangiest of busters because they didn't <laughs> go, it sold a billion. But at the same time, I think as someone's banging underneath me, uh, that <laughs> it's probably... I, you I, were trying to get in. Yeah, Kojima's <laughs> trying to break in. I, you know what? You do the horror game because like horror games can be... I, I felt horror games can be lower budget and that mm. I feel like they can also... You that you can pick up on the on the night on the like the surf of those of the Twitch streamers that you'll go oh and the camera and oh, then okay. there you go then you've sold like a billion just by doing that sort of thing so I think I just go just go to that you've got De- Guillermo del Toro your mates with him just get in there <laughs> and get involved make something maybe may may make a game of that fish film that he did a little while ago and but seriously I think like some more some more um uh, I hate to use the word mainstream but something more marketable than Death Stranding, I guess. So my guess is horror or back to some military roots. Oh, yeah. The thing, the thing is, when Sony signed him, I, I think I've said this on a few different videos, but I have to imagine that the when they were signing those checks, they were like, we've just got Mr. Metal Gear in here. He's going to give us another Metal Gear. This is going to be another massive cross-media, East meets West, East meets West you know, thing, and it's going to sell tons. Then he was like, I'm going to do a hiking simulator with Norman Reedus, and there's going to be <laughs> like ghost babies and everything else. And I kind of wonder if he ever gets shepherded back in that direction. Like, can you please just, like Chris Nolan, like, can you sort of do one for us and one for you? And that might be the thing going forward. Yeah. I feel it's... like, sorry, there we go. I really, I had no, I had no point there, Josh. I was going to vamp until you <laughs> was going to say something. So we can just. Well, I was just going to say, I feel like, you know, if you get Kojima, that you, you're going to expect something mad at this point. He's got like two decades plus worth of pent up creative frustrations that he's just wanting to get out. So I think if you're like Sony and you're getting him, sure in the back of your mind, you want to know the Metal Gear success, but also mm. you've got to know that trying to put him in a box again would probably not be the best way to go just because of how much he kind of like, you know, rallied against Konami in the later stages and how much we all championed him being free from that and being free from the shackles of a Metal Gear. Though I do agree with Ben Roy. I think horror is a great space for him Mm -hmm. because, you know, it's, it's, you do, do not need the budget of like a Call of Duty or a Spider-Man or whatever. And yet the ability to take creative risks uh, is in my opinion like much higher compared to your average triple a action adventure game you know so i want to see him kind of finally give us that horror game that he's been teasing for a while now and do it in a distinctly kojima way where you can just go completely nuts with the story and the mythology give us those awesome um you know intense visuals from death stranding and I'll, I'll finally allow him to create to uh, flex those creative muscles in the same way he did with death Stranding, but maybe in a in an area that is, you know, a little bit more commercially friendly. Do we, we can get on to Silent, uh, Silent Hill in a sec. Do you, th- I, for me, I think he should be in a position relative to Sony, what Joseph Fares is to EA, where he's mm-hmm. just like, I've got a, t- I've got a million ideas and I'm already working on the next one while I'm finishing this one and just 
nicely budgeted stuff because I want more stuff from his mind. I don't want everything put in one basket. I, I don't think he's going to go down to that sort of budget. I think there's a certain <laughs> there's a certain level that Kajim's at no now, and he needs to be able to afford to buy new um, sort of celebrity <laughs> friends. Yeah. And I just, you know what, I'm gonna, I just don't want his next game to be open world. I want it to be a bit more ah, focused. Yeah. Like I, I, I love. Love, love like uh, Phantom Pain and Death Stranding are just, like two of my favorite games of that last generation. Mm. They're amazing, but like playing some of his more directors, like some more like directed stuff recently with Metal Gear Two, Metal Gear Three. I'm like, yeah, I just even if it's just like you know, because Metal Gear Three feels like you're just going through corridors in a jungle, right? It's not a sprawling jungle, but like even if it's something akin to that, like just something more that I'm I can just play and it's not maybe a hundred hours long if you get me <laughs> I was gonna say because you've been going back to Metal Gear 2 and 3 is there anything from those that older version of Kojima where he was working with more of a team that like stands out versus the Phantom Pain and onwards one where he's just he's completely just doing ethereal madness it's just the sheer detail in like the, just it, in Metal Gear 3, especially just enjoying... But I'm, I'm watching Metal Gear 3 at the moment. I'm not, I'm still, I'm not playing it as much. Mm. But uh, I think the only thing that really stands out to me is some of the, get like, some of the like, Metal Gear 2 doesn't seem to age as well, like, in terms of playing, only because, oh, like... Oh, there he is. You've got yeah. a hot, like, like, sort of, like, it's like a kid to Resident Evil, you can't move and shoot, and you've got to hold 17 buttons down. Oh, you can, mate. You just need to hold square, and then X. That's the brilliance <laughs> of that control scheme. You know, there, there was, this is what it was. Uh, my big gripe last night was like, why can't I... Uh, bleep myself there crouch and walk why do i have to <laughs> lie down and move around because that, that was, was what sam fisher was doing and they didn't want to they couldn't <laughs> sam get fisher crouched Don't that's give what me i this. mean sam, sam fisher was oh, okay. for crouch walking they needed to be their own thing <laughs> and i guess so sam fisher crouched to so snake it on the floor but no for me it's <laughs> i think it's just more they they still a bit more grounded because like there's oh there's a bee man and he's lifting up bees but you can see the rope there it's like you know not right. full on magic whereas Death Stranding's like magic and because I still remember when when Metal Gear Three's like trailers came out and yeah like the the Hornet at the pain the guy that's made of bees and he helped save World War Two and there's all that it's just it's insanity and I remember like looking at that stuff and being like well this isn't real and then kind of like going back over and because in my mind when I was a kid after I was, playing Metal Gear Two with a vampire in it well that was my thing but because they explained that is like it's I think. Metal Gear 2, the explanation is that he like nano drank machines. the blood of his parents or something. And then later on, it's nano machines. But like in uh, when I was a kid, I was like, oh, Metal Gear Solid One could like happen. Like it feels, oh, that's just you know, Psycho Man is he's really good at mind stuff, and it all feels like it's, it's mostly grounded. But I feel like over the years, it's gone more and more ridiculous. Until now, with Death Stranding, it's just ghost anime, people and anime. Yeah, anime. It's like full anime, anime has to build up to the full power of its anime ness, and I, 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 <laughs> I would like some more Kojima anime from him. But yeah, I think just more directed sort of like not to the t not to the like sort of a smaller experience where it's like say a 20 dollars 20 pounds face i want i i do oh, want man. my big i do want my big title from him because i think that he can sort of so still command that weight if that makes sense i would hope yeah. that he like i was gonna say yeah josh what do you think in terms of like do you think he would ever go down to, and get the ideas out and do more smaller budget stuff Farris style or is he the guy that you're you're waiting to do another metal gear yeah, I, th I think, I mean, who knows? I'm not in the mind of Kojima, but like, I feel like with the tra trajectory he's been on recently, like part of the Kojima brand is just indulgence. Like yeah. Roy was saying, you know, he's got his A-list of mates that he wants to get in. He wants to get his Hollywood actors in his productions. He wants things to be as cutting edge and as boundary as pushing as possible. Because Metal Gear was always, you know, pushing the limits of tech, pushing what you could do with sort of storytelling and cutscenes, or even in kind of like gameplay. And like Roy again was saying, the detail in MGS2 and MGS3 that it's just, it's crazy. You had like the melting ice cubes in Metal Gear Solid 2 that yeah. means nothing, but it was in there. And I just feel like that level of opulence is kind of inherent to the brand. And I don't know if he would ever sacrifice it, but maybe he would do it, you know, if he could get a few projects out a bit quicker. But for me, the fact that he is like a Chris Nolan, like you said, Scott, you know, he's mm. someone who can command, one of the few people who can command this level of budget with that amount of creative freedom, like very few directors can do that in the gaming yeah. space. So I'm always interested, even if I don't like it, which is admittedly very rare, I just want to see what he can do with all of that money, that creative freedom to just kind of like go wild. It would be cool. 
if you had like interesting collaborators like Guillermo del Toro, you know, Norman Reedus, uh, Junji Ito, whoever's mm. rumored for the next one, you know, but um, I feel like if I'm going into a Kojima production, I want a big Kojima production. You know, I don't want anything watered down or diluted or anything like that. The thing is, the more distance we get from Death Stranding, the more that seems like such an insane one-off. Like I know it came, yeah. the year 2017 was really bad for microtransactions, Battlefront 2, For Honor, uh, Shadow of War. And then it was like Death Stranding, was Death Stranding? 2019? 2018? 2019? 29? 19. Either way, yeah, it was definitely after the worst of the microtransaction stuff for the most part. And then it just, that, that, it just, I don't know, Death Stranding just feels like such a crazy one off. It feels like Sony going, like, you can do whatever you want. We're just going to ride the the coattails of the fact that we took you from Konami. And then he gets to go, cool, I'll do this crazy hiking simulator thing. It's just, it's insane. (laughs) He had a big wrestling entrance at the Game Awards and came out to (laughs) the Mad Max theme and then was basically like, I one on the champion but like yeah. now i would even i like I, I, I would even like kojima see sam blake here take the sam blake budget and do that like yes yes <laughs> sam Lake makes nice like really like the games that feel like four steps up with them what they, i guess that they're like sort of um valued at sort of thing mm-hmm. and you can get so much like uh, that, so little rope there and i feel like that that maybe could be a kojima thing if you didn't have I don't know, Mads Mikkelsen in there and Troy Baker in there and everyone that you can think of. It's great. Let's just let's just get the cast of the fellowship back in there and just like cast more as doing things. <laughs> well, I forgot how many people are in Death Stranding until like the other day I was going back. I was looking at some different footage and stuff of it. And it's like, yeah, Conan O'Brien, Jordan Vogt Roberts, like that guy from Kotaku or whatever it is. Oh, Edgar, Edgar Wright. Edgar Wright's in there. Yeah. And it's just like, it's just insane. I, that still feels like this victory lap. I, I'm, I'm out of it. I'm going to have my big three course meal because I've been in a POW camp for years, style energy. And I feel like going forward, he'll do something that's a lot freer. Um, oh, sorry, a lot more, um, I don't know, respective of the people who are allowed, who are allowing him to do this. Because that just felt like I can get away with it because I'm Kojima and I'm, I'm away from <laughs> And like he just, he, what is that scanning camera thing that he always got on the road chair with? Basically yeah. go into his mate's house and like, I'm going to scan you. Uh, <laughs> and then like this cake that he like fancies so much, I'm going to scan this cake in, uh, yeah. give everyone this cake <laughs> on their cake. birthday. Yeah, I mean, I looked on my birthday and so many people like that weren't aware of it. He goes, oh, that's a really nice cake. It's not, it's not, yeah. it's not real. It's, 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 it's a, I, I screen grabbed the game. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember when he, he tweeted out saying that like once he, you know, when, he, when the, um, acquisition happened. He was like, "I'm going to go up and down America. I'm going to visit all these different studios, all these different places that do all this." <laughs> the engine tech. tour, <laughs> yeah, this engine tour. Um, <laughs> Kojima on the road, and that was sort of the result of that was him <laughs> realizing that he can take this scanning thing and then just put anybody in it. So it feels like he then got in his DMs and just sort of said, "Like, want to come round and get your face scanned?" And then First that was. Off, you know, man. I'm so up for the grand tour with James May and Hideo Kojima. Like, I know Ben Roy would absolutely watch that from the back multiple, who would, multiple who would, times. Who would be on that tour? It's like Hideo Kojima, maybe Jeff Keighley. Jeff Keighley. Jeff, Jeff Keighley's going to be there. He's going to be there, yeah. Forever convincing him that Kojima You know what? I would love to see how Jeff Gersman would hold up for that for a nice, like, four weeks. <laughs> it only lasts a few days, I think. But I think, um, yeah, Jeff Keighley, Hideo Kojima, and some some random film director that um, Keighley has to fight for affection. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah. Well, Mads, think... But Mads is being paid, like, his normal acting rate the whole time. So he's just, yeah. like, smoking cigarettes like, I don't care. I loved all that stuff after um, Death Stranding was filmed, where all those interviews with Mads Mikkelsen just saying, like, hey, did you enjoy the filming process? What do you think of the story? And he was like, I have no idea what any of that was. He's like, yeah. I just did it. Like, I don't know what, I couldn't tell you. I just, I had a, I had a nice time. I was well fed. Well, he took the role, didn't he? Because his kid was basically like, yes, yes, yes. And it's like the only, the only other role he's taken was he didn't read the script. He right. just, his kid was like, you need to be in the Kojima game. <laughs> well, that, that's kind of the energy that I feel Kojima like definitely coasted yeah. on, or at least imbued for Death Stranding. Um, so yeah, so to go back to like the three sort of main pillars of this, um, like, do you think you'll get another Death Stranding? I don't, because it feels like a one-off. I don't know what you would do with Death Stranding too, especially because one ends so definitively. Like, I don't know what else you would do. I think we'll get something in that world. I don't know whether it will be a straight, um, you know, sequel. Because I feel mm. like, it, for as big as and expansive as it, as it is, Death Stranding One had quite a what felt like a definitive end. You know, at yeah. least for me, it felt like everything was wrapped up. But then again, I do love the mythology of that whole setup, that whole premise. I think you know, all of the characters, all of the creatures, all of the you know, kind of like surreal dream logic the narrative works on is just opens it up to so much potential to like 
like I, I think we said in the, the last podcast or maybe a news video we did where I was like you could do a horror game in the Death Stranding world mm-hmm. that's like completely separate from like the actual story of Death Stranding you know what I mean it doesn't mm-hmm. even have to be called Death Stranding but it could be set in that world because there's so much potential so I do think we'll see certainly more stories taught within that space whether or not it's an actual Death Stranding 2 I'm not sure because yeah. I would like it. I think it would be really cool with like the haptics on the PS5 controller, for instance. I think that would add a lot to the actual gameplay. But whether or not Kojima like, kind of wants to just do something else completely, like who knows? Like the mm. guy can just jump from project to project now if he wanted to. I was going to say, like, Roy, do you want uh, Death Stranding 2 or something more like the Silent Hills thing that just won't go away? I think I need like 10 years between Death Strandings because that one <laughs> took so much out of me at some point, like just emotional outpour in that game. But uh, like there are mini horror games, as Josh said, mm-hmm. in that world. Like you have to go to like a derelict like warehouse and that compared to anything else takes like 20, 30 minutes going through the woods in that very beginning bit. Like that was another sort of section which was very tense the first mm-hmm. time. And like, you know, if you can get another space world in things, like why not being like... <laughs> that game plays with time and space and all that sort of weird stuff and like even people that you think are dead could probably still be around if yeah. you wanted to you could just go boo and then that oh there they were alive sorry the the beach did this instead oh, oh yeah they, they were sitting on the beach for like we the other day when we were we were talking on slack trying to figure out how because we used to understand death stranding we did a whole podcast <laughs> on it but there was yeah. that whole plot thing of like how is he dead and also alive and 30 years have passed and he was on the beach the whole time but the beach isn't real and then it's just it's what if that I did a video that I think Ben Roy actually edited, which was a Death Stranding Ending Explained. Yes. And if you had a gun to my head right now, two years, one and a half years on, and asked me to even say five minutes of that video to you yeah. guys, I couldn't, couldn't do it. Couldn't, no. I couldn't tell you. That was this sort of general mentality that I fell into with Death Stranding. I was like, I'm glad it happened. I enjoyed the hell out of it. I thought the ending was horrible and I've just, it's just gone. Like I want to experience it again. I do want to go back through it, but I couldn't. Whereas Metal Gear, I can quote it to you and I remember the, a lot more of those specific set pieces and I kind of do want that from him. Um, speaking of Metal Gear though, to sort of like round this stuff out, um, let's just say that the Blue Point, the Blue Point are working on a Metal Gear remake. Do they you want be. him, they should do. Do you think, um, or do you want him to step in and be that guy, the external consultant? Maybe he's not in the office, but they sort of like send him an email every now and then, is this the right thing, Mr. Kojima? And he says yes or no or whatever. Do you think he'll get carried away George Lucas style with amending stuff like he did with Twin Snakes? Or do you think he would just go yes, no? I think he should be involved because I think like Metal Gear is him unless mm. unless we're being lied to and he just put his name in front of there and 17 other people wrote it for him and this is all a really? lie. But um, I, I know there were other writers, especially later on as the game's got like more, like number three's got like three credited writers to it. And so, mm-hmm. but I feel like he's the heart and soul of that, like more than anything else. Like If you think of any other gaming series, I can't really like, I, I, I can think of like this, I feel like, I put Sam Lake in the Max Payne, the Alan Wake, the Quantum Breaks, and like the control sort of thing. But I can't really think of anyone else that's so in there, like ingrained into it. I mean, like in Metal mm. Gear Five, we saw his name what, was seventy four hundred times, like after every mission. <laughs> oh god, yeah, he had to remind you every single time. The um, that is the thing though that like that initial writer whose name I always forget, the guy that was the one man translation team for Metal Gear Solid, the original PS One. Yeah. One. Uh, in the West, and that gave it so much of an identity, that like militaristic kind of feel that, for me personally, makes it the best one. That then Kojima hated because it wasn't his original script, and like that—that that was why it went so ethereal and fairy tale afterwards. Because he was like, "I'm going to make this my thing." And um, so I was—that's uh, like again why Twin Snakes is so different. So I, if he was on board, I think he would be the guy going, "No, I want him to do more backflips. I want him to be more over the top. <laughs> I want this, you know, craziness that was in Twin Snakes that I hated." So for me, I wouldn't want him to be involved. Um, Josh, quick thoughts on Mr. Kojima and Metal Gear. Yeah, I think, you know, he's he's with Sony now. If they were doing, if they were funding a remake or whatever, it makes sense to have him on as a consultant. Like, I don't mm. think you would get hands-on just because in general, like, that dude's wanted to be out of the Metal Gear game for so long. So I don't think there's any chance in hell that no. even if he was offered to direct Metal Gear Solid 1 again, they, I can't imagine him taking it <laughs> because he's taken his out and he's uh, stuck with it. But that said, you know, obviously he was like the architect of that entire series. I'm sure there are things, you know, so many decades on that he probably would want would have wanted to do different or envisioned different at the time and mm-hmm. that wasn't possible due to technical limitations or whatever so it would be cool to get that input while you know remaking it but i think if blue point's doing it especially they have such a good knack for knowing when to update something and knowing when to change 
some mechanic or some visual or some kind of UI decision or something whilst retaining the ethos of the original game. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, like Demon's Souls is obviously a great example. You know, their work previously on, I'm pretty sure, didn't they do like the Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 remasters in general? Mm. Like, I think the PSP they did as well. The Vita one There's stuff. ones I'm playing on PlayStation now, which weirdly runs fine. Like mm. I've not had a crash yet. And this isn't me trying to sell PS now. I just feel like I go to so much <laughs> on Game Pass. I should say something about yeah, PS yeah. now. But yeah, that they definitely did that. And I was like, oh God. So you'd hopefully they just like got got the source code in the roof somewhere. Like, you know, like every game developer keeps like, <laughs> theirs in the you would toilet hope or that, something. Um, if they do go down that road, like yeah, Blue Point are the right team for it. And that like I mean that's just pure wish fulfillment stuff. I just want access to a nice Metal Gear bundle, all up 4K, 60, whatever it is. Um, and it'd be cool for them to be overhauled. But obviously we talked about this uh, previously about re-recording the voice lines and everything. Um, but yes, let us know what you think down in the comments below of what you would like from the future of Mr. Hideo Kojima, Metal Gear, Silent Hills, or Death Stranding. Um, for mm -hmm. now, this has been the World Culture Gaming Podcast. I've been your host, Scott Tailford, joined by Ben Roy Turner. You're all pretty good. <laughs> and Josh Brown. Infinite ammo. That's oh, God. <laughs> I can't think of anything. And I'll say bye, though. Bye, then. A surveillance camera. <laughs> Liquid! <laughs> <laughs>